Now that Shadowlands is more dead than your Tinder inbox on a Saturday night, it's finally time to spice things up with our first Dragonflight preview. We spoke with some of the most knowledgeable arena experts in WoW PvP who have been spamming the beta for months, and today we're going to give you their collective prediction of the meta in Dragonflight Season 1. But first, you might be wondering, how will PvP actually change? Even though Dragonflight might seem like Shadowlands version 2, there are a few reasons why the next expansion might alter arena balance forever. One reason might include a shift from burst to sustained damage profiles. Without spoiling too much, you're not going to see sub rogues or fire mages on this list, but let's explain why. About a month before release, Blizzard actually buffed everyone's stamina by an astounding 40%. This meant two things, burst damage was passively nerfed, since now it doesn't chunk your health bar nearly as much, and on the healing side, healers would now have a bit more maintenance to keep their team topped on HP. When you combine that with a completely new and important solo shuffle game mode, which whether you like it or not will affect balance decisions, you have the perfect conditions for one form of damage to become king. Sustained pressure! Anyway. Solo Shuffle seems to clearly favor more raw damage than anything else, which is why Demon Hunters and Affliction Warlocks came to dominate the bracket during pre-patch. This will likely spill over into general PvP balance, which means that mastering your sustained damage and healing will be crucial to adopting this new meta. But speaking of easy classes, we make even the most difficult specs and classes easy to master at the best place to learn PvP, Skillcapped. If you want instant access to the best and most reliable info and strategies out there, talk to you in a way that will quickly have you climbing the ranks stupidly fast, then sign up and make our website Skillcapped your homepage. We recommend enrolling onto our academy courses, which are available right now, teaching you the fundamentals to truly become insane at Arena. Then, when the new season starts, we'll roll out our class guides, where we've worked closely with the world's greatest players to create the very best guides for every class and spec, including Evoker, so you can dominate Arena and solo shuffle in the new experience. Expansion. There's no better place to kick your expansion off in Dragonflight than Skillcapped. Special discount link is in the description below. Melee DPS might have a few wild cards, but there are at least two specs that seem a cut above the rest. The first is Demon Hunter. In a meadow where sustained damage is king, DH is quickly showing how truly dominant they can be, having a damage profile that remains consistently high all game. Dragonflight brings some new tech to the DH toolkit, including a new CC option through Sigil of Misery, which was previously a tank exclusive ability and acts as a targeted AoE fear. This joins their existing crowd control abilities, giving them a wide array of tools that can adapt to many matchups, especially in solo environments. On the pressure side of things, Demon Hunter damage maintains super strong, and with Mortal Dance moved to the talent tree, Demon Hunters have an extra PvP talent slot to work with. Some people might point to the fragility of DH into stuns, which is still a valid concern, but with the change to the trinket set bonuses, all players will have a budget form of the orc racial, which might make stun-based setups much weaker. Not to mention the fact that Demon Hunters held on to the majority of their anti-caster passives, taking 16% less damage from all spell damage passively. In any case, if sustained damage truly comes to define the meta, Demon Hunter is a fantastic spot for Dragonflight Season 1. The same can be said about Unholy DK. Remember that everyone's stamina was buffed by 40%, and for Death Knights, that change mattered a lot. Just looking at their passive talents for a second, not only do DKs have 30% more stamina, but they also take 35% less damage while low on HP. Relative to other classes, this means their defensive toolkit is disproportionately strong in the most critical moments of the game, all while being passive mechanics. Honestly, the DK tree is littered with defensive bonuses that offer a wide array of options for dealing with sustained pressure from melee DPS, but especially against casters thanks to Spell Warden. And taken together, it should be quite apparent that Unholy DK will be well situated defensively for Dragonflight. Bridging the gap between their defense and offense is Necrotic Wounds, which not only absorbs enemy healing, but also heals the DK for a percentage of the damage dealt based on total HP. You should definitely see a trend here. In any case, this will continue to excel in this new meta, especially with the 40% bonus stamina modifier. And when you combine that with the fact that DK damage is still incredibly high, it's pretty easy to see why they might dominate in a sustained damage meta. 
Finally, we have our third melee. Honestly, this was a tough one. The gap between Demon Hunters, DKs, and the rest of the melee lineup is quite large, but Feral Druid could be a niche contender for that third spot. Ferals have two different paths in Dragonflight, one being traditional Necrolord style, focusing mostly on massive bleed pressure, the other being centered around Convoke, which is, well, cool if you are a Feral Druid who likes cheese. In any case, the flexibility to build around these two distinct damage profiles will give Feral a spot in the meta no matter what direction it takes. If sustained damage is the path forward, then Feral Druid dots might continue to be threatening with the return of powerful bleed modifiers. In general though, being a dot class with hybrid utility in a slower meta gives the spec loads of comp options for any bracket. Again, even though Feral might not compare to Demon Hunters or Death Knights, they are still looking good for Dragonflight Season 1. With melee accounted for, let's move on to the three range DPS that will likely dictate the meta. Either Demo or Affliction Warlock might be taking the crown this time around. Remember, sustained damage seems to be the path forward, and the DPS profiles of both of these specs is super well suited for the new meta. Dragonflight also offers the class some returning fan favorite tech to bolster its toolkit. One of the biggest changes to Demo in Shadowlands was the buff to Legion Strike, giving them a strong MS effect as a caster DPS. Dragonflight comes with an update to the dampening system in Arena, where healing reduction will happen faster in every bracket. For a spec like Demo, this is likely a massive buff, since it makes their sustained damage and healing reduction more stressful for enemy healers. And while Affliction might have run victim to some last minute nerfs, the buff to dampening is likely beneficial as well. On top of this, the spec is picking up some recycled abilities. The first being Soul Swap. This was an incredibly powerful spell in the past and helps Affliction Warlocks get out damage even when up against disruptive melee cleaves, a problem that plagued them throughout early Shadowlands. Soul Swap is not alone, however, and is joined by the return of Soul Burn, which interacts with a few important Warlock abilities. The Teleport Boost is a key interaction for this spell and will give all Warlocks incredible mobility in Arena. Overall though, Soul Burn offers the class more unique ways to spend Soul Shards, giving them better defensive coverage. And speaking of their defenses, Warlocks also have some of the best passives on that end, as well as an incredibly strong cooldown that scales off HP, which taken together should give them an advantage in a sustained damage meta. Adding to their damage profile is the recycled Amplify Curse ability, which moved from PvP talents to the general class tree. When used with tongues, it will apply a massive casting speed reduction that can punish healers and other ranged DPS. When used with weakness, it makes targets unable to crit, which can help circumvent any residual damage spikes both of which can be extended passively with every corruption tick for Affliction Warlocks. So yeah, with two specs looking strong on the beta, Warlocks seem like a solid choice going into Dragonflight. Moving on, our next best ranged is Shadow Priest. Last expansion was a wild ride for the spec, and Shadow gradually diminished in strength as the meta evolved, but Dragonflight might be the run back they needed. One huge change to their damage profile is the reintroduction of Mind Spike, which can be made instant while having a massive damage modifier thanks to Surge of Darkness. The important thing to note here is that Mind Spike is on the Shadow Frost spell school, giving Shadow a new way to manage interrupts. Throughout Shadowlands, getting trained was a massive problem since it hindered Shadow Priest from being able to deal damage, and on top of Mind Spike, Shadow has gained Catharsis, which will store any damage they take to empower the next Shadow Word Pain to deal burst damage, scaling off the Priest's total HP, which again was indirectly buffed by the 40% increase to player stamina. Taken together, Shadow Priest is able to do quite a bit of damage, even without needing a cast, and with its hybrid toolkit expanded in the general tree, we think it will be a solid choice for competitive arena. Rounding things up, we have Elemental Shamans, who received massive quality of life improvements going into Dragonflight. Shamans as a whole saw the return of Gust of Wind, and with Earth Grab Totem now being baseline, Ellie Shamans will now have two new tools for dealing with the gradual mobility creep over the past few expansions. These returning spells are joined by some new tech, including the ability to have both Earth Shield and Lightning Shield on at the same time. This might not seem like a big deal, but when combined with Unleashed Shield, will give Ellie Shamans the ability to knock and root enemy players at the same time adding to their highly disruptive toolkit. On the damage side of things, Elemental should be able to navigate the meta wherever it goes. Flame Shock will remain core to the spec, and should feed them enough Maelstrom to spend in instant damage dumps with Earth Shock or Elemental Blast, giving the spec a few different ways to deal damage even while on the move. In any case, if you play Ellie, you should be able to comfortably find a role in a wide array of comps. Now with DPS out of the way, let's wrap things up with the top three healers. You might be surprised to see Mistweaver Monk in our first spot, but here we are. If we had to sum up Mistweaver in Dragonflight, it would be like this. Imagine all the problems monks complained about throughout Shadowlands. Now imagine instantly that all of them were solved, and boom, you have Dragonflight Mistweaver Monk. Aw, oh, you poor monks have no cooldown to press and stuns. 
BAM! You get Restoral! Now you can press one of your biggest offensives while stunned. Oh, but Cocoon is so bad! It doesn't absorb anything and it sucks so much! BAM! Here's a stacking buff that can increase its absorb by up to 150% and oh yeah, that 40% HP buff? Yeah, that buffed Cocoon too. B -b 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 monks die when getting trained and sometimes they die in stuns. Okay, well here is double port, dampen harm, diffuse magic, and you can still port while stunned. Ahem. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Weaver has a lot going for him. But really, towards the end of Shadowlands, monks were already proving to be quite strong without all of this defensive tech, and assuming their healing output and mana efficiency remains as good as it currently is, they will be incredibly good for Dragonflight Season 1. Moving on, we have a complete curveball, with Preservation Evoker taking our next spot. To be honest, this is a massive gamble on our end. With the exception of DK, it has been quite rare for a new class to completely excel right off the bat, but Evoker might be built different, literally. That's because it has the widest array of defensive cooldowns that we have ever seen on any healer, including Rewind, which literally reverses any damage dealt over a period of time. Emerald Communion, which is like a tranquility that can be used while in different forms of CC, and Stasis, which is like a preemptive version of Nature's Swiftness, or an insurance policy for future damage spikes. These are just a fraction of the cooldowns available to Evoker. Breaking down each one by one would be an entire video. While there were some questions about the viability of Evoker early on due to their limited range, it has since been buffed to 30 yards, which might be tricky on larger maps like Tolveron, but should be easily manageable on smaller maps like Dalaran Sewers. Regardless of map size, they should have no issue zipping across the map with Hover, which allows them to cast while moving, while providing a movement speed increase, and a freedom type effect with an optional PvP talent. And with an interrupt, long duration CC, and multiple spell schools, we think Evoker might have a shot at top healer in Dragonflight Season 1. Finally, we arrive at our last healer, Restoration Druid. Honestly, just like Melee, the third healing spot was a pretty tight race, with Holy Priest also being a contender. The reason Resto Druid pulls ahead is its sheer diversity in Arena. Not only are Druids looking like a safe pick for competitive 3v3, but they will likely still excel in both 2v2 and solo shuffle on the back of their amazing healing output. Dragonflight has included some new quality of life improvements for the spec as a whole, including a new burst healing cooldown, which will help expand comp options in 3v3. On top of this, Rake Stun is easily accessible at the top of the Druid tree, meaning Resto has more potential to play aggressive in every bracket. So with an expanded toolkit and flexibility in multiple brackets, we think Resto Druid will be a solid choice going into Season 1. And with that, we have the complete picture of what could be the meta in Shadowlands Season 1. If you don't see your spec mentioned, that doesn't mean it's bad, but rather might just be outside of the top 3 for its role. Remember that the 3rd melee and healer spots are a bit up in the air, with other specs being close to that spot as well. And technically, the game is still in development, so there could be some changes that alter our overall predictions. So be sure to stay subscribed to stay on top of the meta whenever it develops. And if you want a one-stop shop to dominate next expansion, we got you covered at skillcap.com. Our class courses will teach you everything you need to know to get instantly started in Dragonflight. If you have a rating goal you want to achieve this expansion, we got you covered with the data to prove it, which is why we were able to offer you a rating gain guarantee, giving you a full refund if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our site. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Visit skillcap.com to get started the moment Dragonflight launches. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your experience with Dragonflight so far, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.